I was there for 29 years and you know, married there and my children were all born there and of course they're phoning me and they're letting me know what's going on. I'm doing the typical father friend thing saying, oh, you know what, you know, just wait it out, see what happens, you know, the wind's going in the right direction. It really was the first morning there where uh, when the fire started to encroach on McMurray that it really started to hit home for me. Um, my son sent me a Skype. Uh, he actually uh, Skyped me and then he went out and did some FaceTime uh, to show me what's going on and, and then I really understood the gravity. Um, so now all of a sudden I went from being fairly, you know, calm about it and my job and what I'm supposed to do to somewhat of a panicky situation because I, of course, I had my son, my daughter-in-law and my grandson. So uh, it hit home pretty hard and you start thinking of friends and family and everybody else that's there and you realize, oh my God. Um, and within a matter of an hour, it went from blue sky to, well, the situation they were in and it happened to them very quickly. I stayed here. Um, believe me, uh, I think that given if I was up there, I probably wouldn't be much use. Uh, it's a very emotional thing. Uh, the most important thing is a lot of our friends got out on time and, and of course my son uh, got a hold of his wife and my grandson and they got out okay. And my main focus was here and my main focus was to get organized here to send our troops up there to do what they could for Fort McMurray. By the time that uh, we finally got a little bit organized here and I made my phone calls to my superiors to make sure that we could go and of course uh, no hesitation on their part. Uh, within 24 hours, uh, we were gone the next day by noon. Uh, we had our first team up of 10 staff and apparatus and equipment. Early on, um, we were just gathering information and trying to make contact with the right people, including the folks up in, in Fort McMurray, to get a gauge on what they needed and whether we could provide any assistance from a municipal perspective, um, both from firefighting and emergency services, as well as the city as a whole. Yeah, we had five deployments, uh, about five days apiece. There was 10 staff per deployment. Uh, they were frontline. Uh, so our staff from emergency services were frontline firefighters. And they worked with the Fort McMurray group, uh, San Albert, Calgary, Edmonton, and a number of others. There's just too many to name. I believe there was well over 100 that went. Uh, so we're not the only ones that gave our time and energy as well. And, and uh, they were right there fighting on the front line, right with the rest of them. We were the second deployment uh, that uh, went up uh, about five days after. We probably left around uh, May 8th, early in the morning. And uh, we took some uh, transportation vehicles just to uh, get us up there to relieve the uh, initial crew that went. Our job was to go into and find all these hot spots that occurred within the forest itself. So for example, we would be going like uh, into the pines area where all those trees are and we'd go and be looking for uh, areas of the uh, trees or forest that were still burning underneath the uh, ground and we'd be extinguishing them. Were you adequately able to prepare yourself for what you actually saw in Fort McMurray? Um, I would say no. Um, there was a lot of like, as everyone saw on TV, like there were a lot of uh, uh, you know, pictures from TV that show the big fires and everything like that going through the community and uh, the RCMP trying to direct people, you know, to get out and the cars and the chaos. Um, you're just trying to write, wrap your mind around that. Uh, of course, when we got there, there's more organization. Uh, the town was empty of uh, the public. Uh, security was there with the RCMP. And it was just uh, almost surreal. Like, uh, basically, it was almost like imagining like Red Deer being empty, and uh, there was just uh, just the emergency responders there. And so it was something really hard to wrap the mind around. As well as you did see some communities that were affected by the fire. Some were completely burnt out. Uh, some, uh, you know, were saved by the uh, heroic efforts of the Fort McMurray Fire Department and others. Um, it was just very surreal because you'd see literally burnt out um, forest and then all of a sudden there'd be a green area then you'd have uh, intact houses like like nothing really happened there. So when you think about the fact that it's a year later now is that what stands out for you most or, or what's going through your mind now? Um, you know what it is it's uh, you know similar type of you know um, time of year um, you kind of think you know wow it was a lot hotter back then um, you just think of, you know, what potentially could happen and, um, you know, you, you always keep it in the back of your mind that, uh, you know, things, you know, can be uh, normal and then it could be chaos, you know, just like that. 
What we've heard from our staff is that the learnings they've taken from their experience with uh, the Fort McMurray fire was um, invaluable and they've brought that experience back to the city of Red Deer and we've been able to employ those things uh, into our own planning and training and uh, increased our readiness and resilience as a community. So I think that that's a positive. You know, I couldn't be prouder of our staff. Uh, we sent a compliment, of course, initially uh, first responders, but we also sent up, uh, in addition to our police and our fire medics, we sent up communication staff. Uh, we sent up support staff in order to uh, help the people of Fort McMurray navigate both during the fires and in the aftermath. Also very proud of the people of Red Deer who, uh, when we put out the call, opened their homes to welcome. Uh, we had nearly 2,500 uh, people from Fort McMurray come stay in the community. Uh, Red Deerians opened their homes, businesses hosted barbecues to raise funds, uh, uh, hotels and restaurants uh, opened their doors free of charge for the people of, of Fort McMurray. Uh, so certainly our formal response as a city and our response as a community uh, leave us very proud in terms of our efforts in supporting our fellow Albertans. Totally proud. I mean, instantaneously. Uh, and of course, you didn't have to even ask. They were already lined up at the door saying, when are we going? And that says a lot, right? They were willing to leave their family. They are willing to leave their home. They are willing to do what they can to go up there. And it wasn't about money. It wasn't about overtime. It wasn't about that. Didn't even, that wasn't even talked about. Just, Chief, we want to go. Can we go and help? Yes. So it was wonderful. The crew, uh, they, they performed fantastic. But I also want to also say, not only the crew up in Fort McMurray, but there's a lot of resources back here helping us out. You had uh, administrative staff, you had mechanics, you had uh, other members of uh, the uh, fire department that would go and cover shifts, everyone. It was all a big team effort, and I'm really proud of that. When you think about uh, your partner up there, Darby Allen, and how he handled the whole thing, what stands out for you? You know, that was Darby. Uh, that's all I'm going to say. You know, Darby's just that calm, cool, and the English accent doesn't hurt either. You know, I say that with jest. He he's just has that calm demeanor, and the thing about Darby is he cares. He, what you saw was what you got. He, he really cared about his community. He really cared about people. So uh, I expected nothing more or better from him. He, he did a wonderful job.